Whilst humans might text each other or meet up at a coffee shop, dogs can communicate with each other through vocal cues, body language, and even urinating and scratching the ground. Today, we are going to talk to you about scent marking in dogs. We chose this behaviour because it's something that we as dog owners see every day and thought it would be interesting to dive more deeply into. Scent marking is when an animal deposits odorants in specific places in the environment to convey a signal to another animal. It is found across the mammalian class, from the ring-tailed lemur to the lion. Scent marking can be used for a range of communication signals, including defending territory, kin recognition, and social dominance. In fact, dogs even have scent glands between their toes, which they can use to transfer the chemicals onto the ground. Research has also shown that there is a difference in male and female scent marking frequency within the Kalan family. Throughout the rest of this video, we are going to go into further detail about the field study we conducted, the mechanisms, i.e. how does the behaviour work, the ontogeny, i.e. how it develops over the lifetime of the dog, phylogeny, i.e. the evolutionary history of the behaviour, and the adaptive significance, i.e. how does this behaviour improve fitness. For our survey, we wanted to know whether typical male and female dogs in a city would show a difference in the frequency in which they scent mark. We hypothesised that male dogs would scent mark more than female dogs, as this trend can be seen across the canine family tree. We went to several different parks and followed a total of 10 dogs, 5 male and 5 female, continuously for 10 minutes each. All of the dogs were from separate households, and we specifically looked at dogs that were off-lead so that the behaviour of the dogs was less likely to be influenced by their owner or restricted by a lead. With the owner's permission, we recorded the frequency of all the behaviours demonstrated by the individual dogs on an ethogram and also videoed some specific examples of behaviours to allow us to review them at a later date. Here we can see a typical example of a female dog scent marking. We can see that the dog has adopted the squatting position which is common for most female dogs. This video was recorded as part of our research into scent marking in dogs, however this dog was not included in our study as she was never off lead. This is an example of a male dog scent marking and we can see the raised leg position that is commonly observed in male dogs. We then analysed the results of our survey to determine whether male or female dogs scent mark more. We defined scent marking in our survey as marking with urine, although it should be noted that other behaviours, such as scratching the ground, can also be considered as scent marking. We calculated the total number of times that each dog urinated and then expressed it as a proportion of the total number of behaviours observed for each dog. And although we found that, on average, male dogs scent marked 1.7 times as often as female dogs, our study did not provide any significant results. However, this is likely to be due to the very limited sample size for each sex of just five individuals, and the short sample time of 10 minutes was probably insufficient to allow us to get accurate results, as it has been well documented that male dogs scent mark more than female dogs, as shown in research carried out by PAL in 2003 and by McGuire in 2016. So, what might explain this difference in the frequency of scent marking between male and female dogs? Mechanism, sometimes referred to as causation, looks at how a trait works, specifically the anatomy and the regulation behind it. Scent in the nose. To understand scent marking, we first need to understand the dog's nose. A dog uses their nose for two purposes, breathing and scent detection, which is achieved through sniffing. When the dog inhales, their nose splits the air into two streams. One goes down to their lungs for breathing, and the other stream goes to a cavity near the roof of their mouth that is exclusively for smelling. Inside the cavity, there are many folds of olfactory filium. Within these folds, there are around 300 million olfactory receptor cells. Each cilium located in the epithelium can express only one type of receptor cell. Every odour has a specific combination of molecules which stimulate corresponding receptors and a signal is then passed on these receptors along to the olfactory bulb in the brain for processing. Pheromones, chemicals that dogs produce and use for communicating with other dogs, are picked up by an organ called the Jacobson's organ, or vomeronasal organ, which is completely isolated from the rest of the olfactory cavity and subsequent pathway to the brain. The neural pathway. 
Pheromones bind the apical and basal receptor cells within the Jacobson's organ. The receptors then send an axon along the accessory olfactory epithelium to the accessory olfactory bulb. Within the accessory olfactory bulb, there are many glomerulus that receive specific signals, meaning that all of the receptors carrying the same signal go to the same glomerulus. Within the glomerulus, the multiple axons will synapse onto one mitral or top of the cell, but then carry the information to the amygdala. The amygdala is responsible for processing emotions, either positive or negative, and sends a signal to the hypothalamus, which then directs physiological functions by secreting neurohormones. The HPG axis. The HPG axis is the signaling pathway connecting the hypothalamus, pituitary and gonads. The hypothalamus releases gonadotrophin-releasing hormone, which travels via the hypophyseal portal system to the anterior pituitary. The gonadotrophin-releasing hormone binds to its receptors on the anterior pituitary gland. This allows the pituitary to then release luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone. These hormones travel down to the gonads in the dog. In the male, they act on the testes to cause testosterone production, and in the females, they cause the ovaries to produce estrogen and progesterone. Pheromones are then secreted from within the urinary tract, vulva and prepucial area to allow the dogs to mark over top with their own scent and continue the communication. These sex hormones drive the behaviour as far as we see within the dogs performing scent marking. Experimental results have shown that urinary patterns are determined by prenatal endocrine levels. This influences not only the frequency in which urination occurs, but the manner in which it occurs, as well as if it is intended for scent marking. Urinary behavior is sexually dimorphic and influenced by exposure to certain hormones prenatally and a short critical period immediately following birth. Male dogs scent mark differently than female dogs, as they commonly exhibit the stand forward position as juveniles and either partial or full elevation as adults, as seen in the image. Full elevation is used when males are directing toward an environmental target for scent marking, whereas females typically do not achieve urinary elevation beyond the squat lift as adults. These differences in urinary positions, as well as the frequency of scent marking, are primarily influenced by testosterone levels in male dogs. Several studies have been conducted in which male dogs are castrated, with some receiving testosterone treatments afterwards, and female dogs treated with testosterone prenatally. These experiments help to assess the various effects gonadal hormones have on urinary and scent marking behaviors throughout development. Results of these studies showed that an increase in testosterone levels in female dogs in utero tend to exhibit male pattern urination as adults. However, males whose testosterone levels were manipulated postnatally via castration continued to develop the typical adult urinary positions of partial or full elevation. These results support that urinary patterns are predetermined by levels of testosterone in utero. Additionally, testosterone is not necessary at the time these urinary behaviors manifest, nor is it required to maintain urinary behavioral patterns throughout adulthood. Therefore, it can be concluded that testosterone is not required to directly stimulate these behaviors, but rather to condition the necessary mechanisms when dogs mature beyond the stage of reflexive urination. Although female dogs treated with testosterone adopted male urinary positioning, males who were left intact and castrated still had a higher frequency of scent marking than females, and this was true for both juveniles and adults. However, female dogs do mark with urine more frequently around the period in which they're in heat. Between both sexes, though, it's important to note that older dogs urinate more frequently, and this is likely correlated with the increased risk of kidney disease in senior dogs, as a higher occurrence of urination is a common symptom. So we know that scent marks allow dogs to discriminate available mates and territory, and we know that these scent marks initiate olfaction, whereby the binding of ligands to an olfactory receptor in the nasal cavity can trigger a behavioural response, which in this case is urinary behaviour. So how can we describe this from the perspective of phenotypic and genotypic precursors? The dog is an olfactory sensitive animal and has an olfactory receptor gene repertoire of more than 1,000 genes. However, about 20% of these genes are pseudogenes. The fraction of olfactory receptor genes, or OR genes, that are pseudogenes in the dogs is much lower than the 60% found in humans and is similar to the 20% found in rats. The small fraction of pseudogenes implies that the OR genes of dogs have been under fairly intense selection pressure through most of their evolutionary history. During dog evolution, two bottlenecks have been described. 
The first accompanied the domestication process, while the second occurred during the recent formation of the multiple modern breeds. Village dogs are thought to represent an ancestral state of dog before breed formation, and thus would not have experienced the second bottleneck associated with breed formation. Analysis of village dogs therefore yields insight into the ancestral populations of dogs and allows us to compare olfaction with modern breeds. During breed formation, selection on some genes has been greatly strengthened by artificial selection, and extensive linkage disequilibrium has been found in dog breeds. This phylogram, taken from a study by Chan and colleagues in 2012, shows the gain and loss of polymorphisms in the segregating olfactory receptor pseudogenes during the evolutionary history of the wolf, Chinese village dog and other dog breeds. In A and C, numbers in the rectangular box are non-synonymous to synonymous polymorphism ratios. In B and D, numbers in the rectangular box are ratios of tolerated to untolerated polymorphisms. Numbers above the line are the numbers of polymorphisms gained, whereas the numbers below the line are the numbers of polymorphisms lost. Double asterisks indicate statistically significant differences. The study found that in natural populations, segregating olfactory receptor pseudogene and pseudoalleles showed a trend to be eliminated in competition with functional alleles whereas within domesticated dogs, this trend has changed. In ancestral dogs, these genes are evolving neutrally, whereas in domestic dogs, they are evolving under artificial purifying selection. To summarise what this means for modern scent marking behaviour, the evolutionary divergence of olfaction genes in canines has led to deviations in scent marking behaviour between ancestral and modern breeds. Specific functions of a scent mark have been lost over time, as indicated by the ratio of pseudogenes, because domesticated dogs are not under the same selection pressure. In modern dogs, scent marking is primarily a function of sexual availability and of little priority, whereas in ancestral dogs and wolves, this behaviour is much more important, and territorial protection and status is of a greater priority. The ancestral importance of communicating alpha status could offer an explanation for our findings in terms of the increased frequency of male urination when compared to female. Adaptive significance focuses on a certain trait or behaviour and how it affects the fitness of an individual. Scent marking in dogs plays an important role in territorial and social behaviour as well as reproduction. Both male and female dogs use scent marking as a way of defining territorial boundaries and asserting dominance. Olfactory communication can occur through direct contact, such as social interaction or indirect contact through scent marking, which allows the dogs to pick up various information, such as sex, age, or reproductive state of another dog. Scent marking with urine is more common in female dogs when they are in seeding, which is to indicate their reproductive status and to attract males. Males are able to distinguish different odors and gain information about the female's cycle stage. The scent left by the female is attractive to males who will then mark on or near to impress the female. However, other females may also mark as a form of competition. Male dogs tend to use urine marking as an indirect way of assessing potential competitors. This is because scent marking allows the dogs to assess social status of other dogs while avoiding the stress and potential injury of an encounter with another male dog. In terms of garden territory, Scent marking could also work as a chemical sign to intimidate other dogs. Intact male dogs have been shown to be more aggressive in encounters with other male dogs than female dogs are with others of the same sex. This may explain 
why male dogs spend more time sniffing the scents of other male dogs, as the information they obtain from the scent will help them to avoid unnecessary conflict. This may also explain why it is more common for male dogs to scent mark than it is for females. So to summarise, studies have shown that male dogs scent mark more frequently than female dogs. In dogs, pheromones bind with receptors within the vomeronasal organ, which causes hormones to be secreted, which then act on the urinary tract, causing scent marking. Urinary and therefore scent marking patterns are determined by prenatal testosterone levels, but changes to these levels don't influence the behaviour in later life. Due to different selection pressures, scent marking in wolves is more important to them and puts its emphasis on territory protection and status, whereas in dogs it is of low priority to them and is used more for communication of sexual availability. Scent marking can be used by female dogs to advertise their reproductive status and by male dogs to allow them to indirectly assess potential competitors and therefore avoid potentially aggressive encounters.